This is the true story of Count Karl Tanser von Kosel, a man that may have read Frankenstein one too many times. Considered a tragic love story by some, it's a horrific tale of obsession by most. Brace yourself for some real Florida weirdness. Karl Tanser was born in Dresden, Germany in 1870. Self-reportedly in the ancestral palace that once belonged to August the Strong and Countess Anya Castagna von Kosel. When he was 10 years old, he claimed that he had been visited by the Countess's spirit and that she had told him he would one day meet a dark-haired beauty that would be the love of his life. Tonser was so convinced of this vision being proof that he descended from royal lineage, so he applied for a name change to Count Karl Tonser von Kosel. Tonser claimed that he was a gifted and far more intelligent student than his classmates boasting to have passed examinations in metaphysics, mathematics, calculus, engineering, astronomy, and physiology, all by the time he was 24. He moved to Australia in the late 1890s, where he acted as an engineer for the government. He seemed to be happy and prosperous here, claiming that his British neighbors accepted him as one of their own. But when World War I began, he was treated with hostility due to his German nationality, he was repeatedly robbed and vandalized and lost all of his books, documents, belongings, and his beloved pipe organ. Left with nothing, Tonser was soon on his way back to Germany. In 1920, he married a German woman named Doris Schaefer and they had two daughters. But the marriage was an unhappy one and six years later, Tonser abandoned them in Zephyr Hills, Florida after moving to the United States at his mother's request. He wound up working as an x-ray technician at the Marine Hospital in Key West living in an abandoned building that once served as an automobile storage and real estate office. The former owner had jumped off a building after the stock market crash. In 1930, Tonser met a beautiful 21-year-old patient named Elena Milagro de Hoyas, a Cuban-American woman who was suffering from tuberculosis. Her mother had brought her to the hospital for treatment, and it was Tonser who administered the x-ray. It was instantly clear to him that Elena was the dark-haired beauty of his dreams, the vision that the Countess had told him about. The 60-year-old man began an obsessive quest to treat her illness, claiming that he had a machine that could cure her, and he began visiting her at her family's home, showering her with gifts and repeatedly requesting for her hand in marriage, which she always refused. But sadly, there was no viable treatment for tuberculosis at the time, and it would only be a year later that she would end up succumbing to her illness. Elena died in 1931 with only a few friends and family attending the funeral. Tonser was overcome with grief and begged Elena's family to let him have her body interred in an expensive crypt, one that he'd have designed to reflect her beauty and importance. Tonser visited the crypt daily, having hour-long sessions alone with Elena's body. He played music to her, spoke to her, and claimed that she would sing to him from inside her coffin. He was the only person with a key to the crypt, and while people thought he was just heavily grieving, no one could have guessed what he was actually trying to do. With a combination of electrical and x-ray equipment and expensive chemicals imported from Germany, Tonser was trying to raise Elena from the dead. After two years of failed efforts, he stole her body from the coffin one night and returned to the dilapidated junkyard he called home. He doused the body in chemicals, electrified it with homemade inventions and machines. Of course, this did nothing to stop the decomposition process that had already long began to occur, and he resorted to reconstructing her body from wax and paper mache. He replaced her eyes with glass, her decaying joints with piano wire, her face was layered in makeup and cheesecloth. For a time, he had kept her body in a wingless airplane which he had built to one day transport her body into space to be healed by the radiation of the sun as his last step in the resurrection process. For seven years, Tanza lived with Elena's body as if she never died. He dressed the body in silk robes and jewelry. He played music to it daily. A local boy reported to have seen him dancing with what he thought was a doll. Rumors began to spread and it became local gossip that the eccentric recluse was hiding a sinister secret. Elena's sister Medina confronted Tonsler and demanded that he open Elena's tomb, to which he refused. Medina and her husband petitioned for a search warrant of the tomb, and it was soon discovered that the body was missing. The police descended on Tonsler's dilapidated shack and found the horrific scene. Elena's upright body greeted them, dressed in a blue silk gown with flowers in the hair and a veil covering the face. Tonsler was arrested, 
on the grounds of disturbing a grave. Despite the horrific details of the story, Tonser was looked at with sympathy from the community. Neighbors banded together to raise enough money for his bond, believing that he didn't deserve to be in jail. Newspaper articles called it a love story, referring to Elena as his sweetheart. The statue's limitations for the grave robbing charges had passed, and Tonser eventually walked free. Heartbroken and feeling defeated after losing Elena's body, Tonser left Key West to join his estranged wife in Zephyr Hills. Shortly after leaving town, the elaborate tomb that once held Elena's body was mysteriously destroyed in an explosion, and her family had her remains buried in a secret location that remains hidden to this day. On August 14, 1952, Tonser was found dead in his home, surrounded by junk and blood transfusion equipment they found a life-size plaster effigy in Elena's likeness. No doubt that even up until his death, Tonser never quit trying to bring Elena back to life. A dramatic ending to a very dramatic tale. I hope you liked my first episode in my Creepy Tales series, and if you have any scary stories or creepy, chilling tales that you'd like me to cover, leave a comment below and I will do a little research and put something together. Bye!